When I first moved to Houston many years ago, one of the first things I did, I remember, was that I floated down the Guadalupe in a canoe. How many of you have ever either tubed or floated down the Guadalupe River? A lot of us have done that before. I had never done that in my life. I was like a sophomore in high school. A friend of mine from Louisiana was in town. We'll just call his name Jay because that was his name. And Jay had on this Harvey Wallbanger t-shirt. I didn't know what a Harvey Wallbanger was but he had on this t-shirt he was so proud of. We jumped into a canoe. Neither one of us knew anything about canoeing or the, or the river or anything like that. We jumped in the canoe, boom, and headed downstream. Now, I'll tell you what happened to Jay and I in just a little bit, but let me just say this. Here's one thing I did notice. I'm not very smart, but I did notice this. Whenever you get into a river, whether you're on an inner tube or a canoe or you think you're gonna swim in it, one thing's for sure. You are gonna feel the power of the current. The current, once you get into a river, is gonna take you somewhere, okay? It's gonna take you where it wants to take you and that you guide it or direct it with your skills, which Jay and I did not have. More on that later. You know what? Here's the deal. There is a current going on in our culture and in the country, in the city, in the town where we live. Whenever we walk outside the four walls or eight walls, I don't know, of this church, whenever we look at our phone, whenever we engage in media, go to our work, go to school, all the activities we do, there is a current that's tempting us and pulling us to do what it wants us to do. I call the forces, or if you would, the temptations in this culture, our culture, the three eyes. The three eyes. These Three eyes are ubiquitous, and we feel the incessant pull, pull of the three eyes. That's the undercurrent and the overcurrent in our culture today. What is the first eye, you ask? First eye that we're tempted to do, I'm tempted to do, is to impress, right? We've got to impress other people by the way we look, by the way we talk, by the way we dress, where we live, who we know, what we've seen, what we do, blah, 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 where we are, we have to impress. And if you don't have anything to impress people with, you fake it. Fake it till you make it. We impress people. I think about the comedian Brian Regan, Brian Regan, had a bit many years ago talking about the me monster. You ever been to a party and met a me monster? You know a me monster? The only people that can talk about it is me and I and me and this and I and I and me, 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 me. <laughs> Enough about me. I want to hear what you have to say about me, right? The me monster. We want to impress people. And we may not be a full-blown narcissist or anything like that, but we all have that desire when we're in the company of others, around others, to impress people. We see that a lot at Christmas time in our culture, don't we? We write a letter to inform everyone within our Christmas card circulation about just how great our family is. You ever get one of those? I call them a brag Christmas letter. It's getting really quiet in here now. My son Johnny just got accepted into Harvard. Little Mary is going to, you know, med school. I, Billy is, you know, getting his master's at MIT. We've just moved here, traveled here, done that. Me, look at me. I am impressed. And when you read this, it makes you feel like a loser. We want to impress people. It's the first I we're tempted to do. 
when we're in conversation with someone. We're, we act like we're listening. We're, we're just waiting for them to close their mouth so we can tell them how important we are and who I know and what I've done and what I've but, but, no, I, me, me, I, well, I want to impress, right? We're, we're tempted to do that. That's a part of the current in our culture. It's the big I, to impress. The second I is to indulge. Man, wherever we go, whatever we do, whenever we look at our phones and stuff, we're tempted to indulge. Woohoo! jump on the pleasure train. I'm just gonna chase pleasures. I'm gonna find my meaning in pleasures. I'm just gonna pursue this with all the gusto I can. Nothing will happen to me. I, you know, I, I can pursue this lifestyle. I can pursue the party train and jump on board and nothing's gonna happen at all. Man, we have so much surrounding us today. It's always been there. It's simply easier today to access whatever pleasure we desire. It's right there, one click. We can get whatever we want. And so the, the temptation we have, we all have, in our culture today is to indulge whether we're talking about sex, whether we're talking about porn, whether we're talking about drinking, whether we're talking about drugs and vaping or whatever that is, or gambling or shopping, we have all these temptations to indulge us all the time. It's incessant, it's all around us. That's the second eye. The third eye is to increase, <laughs> right, increase. We want more. And after we want more and get more, we want more. And then we want more. And we want what we want, and we want it now. And we want it faster. And we're disappointed and we're upset when we don't get more and we don't get it faster and faster and faster and more and more and more. That's just where we live. Plato said this. He said, the excessive increase of anything causes a reaction in the opposite direction. It's called the law of diminishing returns. Many years ago, young people, there was a billionaire when there were not billionaires by the name of Nelson Rockefeller. And someone asked Rockefeller, hey, how much money does it take to satisfy a person? And you know what Rockefeller said? Just a little bit more. More. Three eyes. Impress, indulge, increase, repeat. <laughs> Impress, indulge, increase, repeat. And that's the current that we live in that pulls us, pulls us downstream. Where does it lead? Well, I can tell you where our canoe led in the Guadalupe many years ago as a sophomore in high school. We were going downstream and Jay was at the back of the canoe and he was, you know, kind of, I guess, guiding it there at the back, didn't know what he was doing. And he started to stand up. There were some rapids approaching. He says, hey, I've got an idea. I'm gonna stand up to try to shoot these rapids. We didn't know anything about that. So he stands up in the rapids. We start going in. We dodge this rock. We dodge that rock. And boom, you know what happens. We capsize. Boom, we turn the, the canoe over. I smash my knee on the rocks. Still have a scar there, right? Still there. We fall over. We finally stumbling around the water and the current's taking us. We swim back on, grab our canoe, you know, somehow get it out, boom, get back in the canoe and start trying to make our way down the river. Jay lost his Harvey Wallbanger shirt. He's still bitter about that. So the current 
Just like in the Guadalupe, he's taking you somewhere. And if we give in to the current of the three eyes, if we give, give in to impressing and indulging and increasing, if we give in to that, it's gonna take us downstream and it's gonna cause us to crash or potentially go over the falls. That's just how it is. It's not gonna get us what we want. It's gonna give us more anxiety. It's gonna give us more worry. It's gonna fill our canoe and fill our lives with fear. So, what do we do? How do we fight or how do we swim or paddle upstream in a culture that's crying out for us all the time to impress, indulge, increase, repeat. Impress, indulge, increase. What do we do? Who can show us what to do? Check this out. The very first book in the New Testament Jesus said this, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, stumbled upon it, he hid it. Wow, there's treasure here. Takes it, hides it, and then in his joy, he went out and sold all he had and bought that field. Look at Matthew 5, verses 33 following. We've heard, heard this passage before. It says, but seek First, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. How do we push back? How do we swim upstream? These passages tell us. What do we do? Do we just say, no, 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 I'm gonna resist, just say no, that's a part of it. But what we have to have is a louder and more powerful yes. Once this guy in the parable found this great treasure, he had joy, joy in selling everything he had to buy this field. Jesus says what? Seek first. Seek first his kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. So what do we do? We listen to the late, great Thomas Chalmers, who was a brilliant intellectual and a theologian many years ago. And he wrote a book or gave a message entitled, listen to this, The Expulsive Power of a New Affection. The Expulsive Power of a New Affection. So when we are trying to break a habit in our life, when we're trying to fight back against the desire we all have to impress or to indulge ourselves on the pleasure train or to increase, increase, increase to an extreme, when we're tempted to do that, how do we fight it? Do we fight it simply by willpower? Or do we listen to Chalmers and what this passage says in Matthew, and that is we pursue positive kingdom values, positive kingdom truths and realities that will drive out the negative, okay? It's like if I'm trying to lose weight and I focus on, I can't have this, I can't have this, I can't have this. That's all negative. Rather focus on what I can eat, what I can do. I'm trying to get out of debt. I can't buy this, I can't buy this. Talk about what you can do, what you can buy. And so rather than focusing on the negative, and I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm gonna focus on the positive, and when I focus on the positive, what God wants me to do, that's not gonna give me time to deal with the negative, to deal with those three eyes. It's just a, another way, another angle, another approach of doing God's will the expulsive power of a new affection. We pursue positive kingdom living in order to drive out the three eyes that drag us all downstream. 
We pursue the positive to drive out the negative. Does that make sense? Can I get an amen? Thank you. Chalmers talked about exchanging an old affection for a new affection. Huey Lewis said back in the 80s, I need a new drug, one that won't make me sick, right? What do we do? What does that look like? Well, let's go back to the three eyes quickly, the three eyes. When I'm tempted to impress, I'm going to bless. When I'm tempted to just talk about me and what I've done and who I know, well, I, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna ask God, God, how can I bless this person or how can I bless my friends? How can I bless my family members? How can I encourage them? How can I make it about them and not about me, 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 me? I'm gonna bless them. So when I'm tempted to impress, we all are, we all are, I'm gonna turn around and go positive, do the opposite, go upstream, and I'm gonna bless them. I'm gonna find something to encourage them, to lift them up, not pull them down. Not to talk about me, 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 me. How about indulge? I'm tempted to indulge. I'm tempted to just jump on the pleasure train. Life has been difficult. Life's been brutal to me. Therefore, I deserve it. I can do whatever I want to do. That's who I am. That's what I'm going to do. I simply don't care. Listen, when we're tempted to indulge, what we need to do is divulge. Divulge. What does it mean to divulge? It means to let someone else know about that secret that's in your heart and mind. And if you're going to overcome any addiction, and I could stand many people up here today that could stand behind this glass pulpit lecture and whatever the heck it is, and they could say, hey, I got free from drinking. I got free from drugs. I got free from whatever was their addiction by divulging to someone I could trust and talking to God, divulging to God what I was desiring to do. That's the only way you're going to get free. That's one of the steps to getting free. The idea that I'm gonna fight this addiction, I'm gonna fight this indulgence by myself with my own willpower, that will not work. You need to divulge, you need to confess it to a person, confess it to God, and that breaks the power. So instead of impress, I'm gonna bless. Instead of indulging, I'm gonna divulge. And finally, instead of increase, more, 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 increase, I'm gonna release. I'm gonna release, I'm gonna give. I'm not gonna walk around like this, my life, with the gifts, the talents, the treasures, the time God's given me, I'm gonna release this to God. I think about years ago, there was a guy in our church who had just crushed it, made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, okay? He was on a hunting trip, and on that trip, somehow God convicted him, hey, you got enough. You've got enough stuff. You've got enough cash. Stop increasing. You need to release. And this guy, this business guy, just had this vision. Hey, I want to start churches. I want to start churches throughout the country of Mexico. So he gave just a lot of money, a lot of money to start and to plant churches throughout the country of Mexico. And our church was a part of facilitating that and doing that. And it was a major impact. It's when God got a hold of his heart and said, life's not just about me. Not, life's not just about me increasing my stuff and building bigger barns. I want to release and be responsible for the money and time that God's given me. I want to make a kingdom impact in my life. And God used him, used this guy, used his, his vision and his, his funds to really make a difference in the lives of so many people in the country of Mexico. It's amazing. It's amazing what God can do when we start going counter culture, when we start going upstream against the three eyes by living positive, 
kingdom values. And that's what the gospel gives us the power to do. The gospel is the good news that God has come down to earth in his son, Jesus Christ, to live a life that we couldn't live, to die a death we couldn't die, to rise again, that we could be forgiven, that we could be connected to God, that he could plant his spirit inside of our life, that we would have the power to live life in a different way. And that by our choices, he could empower us to swim upstream and against the current that's dragging us and pulling us downstream. He gives us the grace. He gives us the power to do that. To bless, to divulge, and to give, to release. Hey, let's pray together. God, I thank you for our time here today. God, I thank you that we all know the power of the current in our culture. We all have to do battle with the three eyes. God, I thank you that you don't call us to simply just, you know, clench our, our fists and, our, and gnash our teeth and I'm, I'm gonna stop. But God, you call us to live in a positive way, in a different way to combat these desires with a stronger desire, with a stronger joy, which is pursuing you and your way of living. God, help us to do that today. Help us to do that this week. God, right now, I pray for those here who have not made that commitment to you. They've never turned their life over to you. They've never truly experienced your forgiveness, your new life that only you can give in their hearts and minds. And God, today is that day. God, may they stand and walk down front and give their hearts and their minds and their lives to you. May today be a fresh day, a new day of hope. May you place them on a new path. Help them, God. Give them that ability to stand and come down front today, right now. Lord, others here, they know you, they're walking with you, they're following you. They simply need a place where they can belong, a place where they can serve, and they want to join second. So Father, I pray for Christians here, Christ followers, you need to stand and come down front today. May you lead them to stand and come down front during this time of invitation. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.